Guys, welcome back. I'm Bevan. And in the previous video, we uh, began to introduce this idea of training and testing or training and validating your model. We train it on a certain portion of the data and we take a certain portion of the data and we hide it so that we've trained on a, on a, on a specific um, portion of the data and then we test those models on unseen data, data that they haven't seen yet. Why is that? Well, the main reason I gave in the previous one was we wanted to test the generalizability of these models. And of course, that's that's true. I want to add, uh, there's, there's essentially two reasons why we want to carry out uh, training and testing, or training and validation. And the one I just mentioned is we want to see how well the models generalize. And the second one, which is a bit more difficult to understand now, uh, but we will get to videos in the future, are we would like to tune the model hyperparameters. Now, I don't have time to get into this, but for example, if you've got a neural net, uh, a neural net, the way a model learns is by learning parameters. Okay? And that's generally uh, through some kind of optimization process. Okay? But there's also something in models called hyperparameters, which is also, you also learn these via an optimization process. But this is generally done through uh, this, this idea of training and testing, which is, and essentially it's done through cross-validation, which we've mentioned before. Okay, guys, so this is what I want to just emphasize before we get into the details of any of these, is that we train and test, we validate why, to see how models generalize to new data and also to train hyperparameters of models. Okay? Um, so we've already discussed in previous videos that essentially uh, when it comes to supervised learning, supervised learning, we essentially have regression and classification type problems. Yeah, I'm not going to go into all those details, but uh, when we are trying to train our models and then test them on this test data, we have to use a certain kind of evaluation metric or error metric, right? It's a, it's a type of a measurement so that we know uh, this model has this error. And this model has that error, and then we can compare those two models. And one of the more uh, common types of metrics is MSE, the mean squared error. And we're going to, if this video doesn't get too long, we're going to do a simple, simple example. Okay? You also get, uh, for regression, you get the mean absolute error, and you also get something called R squared. These are just examples of types of metrics that we can use for classification okay here uh, some examples are the area under the curve uh, f score and these essentially come from data that you find in something called the confusion matrix all right but i'll make i'll make uh, videos on this in due course okay so now what is the mean squared error Okay, let's let's first let's look at this from the bird's eye view. Okay, you take your entire data set. Okay, here's your we'll call this X. These are your input features. This section is are your input features, and this is your target. Okay, your target. Remember, we're doing supervised learning, so we've got this. We are being supervised, and if we use our train test method, then we randomly take a certain percentage of this data set as our training data set. Whatever it can be, 60%, 40%, 80%, well, maybe never 40%. But, you know, so now you, you choose 80% of this data set randomly. You randomly take it. And by the way, you have to take 
both X and Y, both your inputs and your outputs, randomly 80%. Then, so here's your training data set. It's called a training. You then use this training data set and you train your model, say your linear regression or your neural net or your random forest. You train those models. Now you've got, you've got your models trained on this data set. Okay, then this is this is what you do. You take if you've got say now you, there's your then you take your test data set. Remember your test data set is made up also of inputs and output. This is historical data. We we have it. We know what the output is, and we take this. Now we've got our our models that are trained. Let's just call it a model. Right? These, these are our models. They've been trained. We now feed our input into the model and our model now produces a prediction. We can even call this Y hat. A prediction. But the nice thing about this is we, we have from our test data set we have the actual output let's call it actual y we we have a predicted y and an actual y and so we use something for example called the mean squared error mse which is equal to 1 over n sum of i equals 1 to n n is the number of the number of examples in this data set. Okay? So if your data set, if your test data set is made up of say three examples, then this would be one over three. Okay? And here we have y hat minus y, okay, i, i squared. Okay? So this is your mean squared error. So what we're looking at, we're saying we've now trained our model. We have a trained model, but now we want to predict how well this does in comparison to the actual test data. So we take our test data input, we put it into the model, we make a prediction, that's, that's these ones, and then we compare it with the actual value and we compute an error, your mean squared error. And you do this for your uh, linear regression, you do this for neural net, you do this for random forest. Okay, so I'm going to make up some values. Say now your model, linear regression, say now there were only two uh, entries uh, in our test data set. So remember that what we were doing before is we had, we uh, were considering predicting house prices okay so say now for you we took this input and we put it into our model it made a prediction and it gave us a certain output for the model lr and we took the second input we put it into our model and this model then gave us two outputs okay say it was 401000 right dollars for a house and the other one was say $152,000 for the house and we did this we did the same with a neural net that we've trained and we got say 402,000 and 153,000 for the neural net right I'm just making up numbers so these guys are predictions predictions based on Taking the actual out, uh, the actual input, putting it into there, and they predict a predicted output. But say now your test output, which is the actual output, was say four hundred and three thousand for for this example, and say it was one hundred and fifty one thousand for the second example. So what you would do now is you would take if we wanted to get the MSE 
for our linear regression model, we would say 1 over 2 because n equals 2. And we would say, we would open brackets and we would say 401,000 minus, that's the predicted, minus the actual 403,000. We would square that. And then we would say 152 minus 151, and we would square that, and we would get a number. And similarly for MSE neural net, we would do the same thing. We would go 402,000 minus 403, square that guy, and then we would say 153 thousand minus 151 thousand and we would square that and we would calculate this and get a value so now we have trained our model on a training data set and then we've gone and tested it and we've produced it produced a prediction and compared it with the actual values and computed errors and so the the a, a very practical way now is which of these models has the lowest error? Which has the lowest error? What that means is it has the lowest generalization error. So if my linear regression model has the lowest error, then I would essentially use this for all future work that I get for new data. Right? So that is a quick example of um, training on the training data set and then carrying out testing by using a specific uh, error metric. Now you can also use mean absolute error or R squared. These all, the idea is they all get, they all compute an error between a Y, a predicted value and an actual value, okay? And then we can compare our models with each other so that we know which one gives us the lowest error.